one. Hey, welcome to Under the Influence. This is a show about storytelling yeah. and messages, not alcoholic beverages. I am your host, Laquan Robinson, and this is our show. Um, first off, I want to make sure that you like, share, follow, follow us on all social media platforms under the Influence Live. We're on Facebook and we are on YouTube. Um, we're taking questions for, uh, for live as we go on. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them uh, in the chat and we will get them out to our illustrious guest who is sitting to the left of me, uh, our very special guest who brought along a live studio audience with <laughs> us all the way from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, she is a artist, entrepreneur, storyteller, activist, and just an all around good <laughs> sister, sister soldier. Give it up, everybody, for the wonderful Michelle Brown. Claps. <laughs> claps, 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 claps. What's going on, sister? <laughs> Not much, brother. This yeah. is cool. This is cool. Hey, we, 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 we are excited to have you. You know, you have been featured in many publications. Um, Essence Magazine. Yeah. New York Times. You know. National Geographic. Come on. You know, uh, Montgomery Advertiser. We're just happy to have you. And we're, we're happy to have you here doing stuff locally in our wonderful community, in the beloved community. So uh, thank, thank you for everything that you do. Oh, no, thank, thank you. So thank you uh, for again, you. welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. So everybody might not know your backstory. So just mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your backstory, and then we're gonna get on to the good stuff. Uh, the backstory as as it relates to the tour. Well, just, just you, just you in general. Now, even going back to uh, you know your organization, not just more than tours, but mm -hmm. I am more than what you're doing with, with the children, and even going back, what brought you to Montgomery. Yeah, well, so what brought me to Montgomery was my parents who have an organization here. Mm -hmm. And um, they wanted, they called me. I'm happy in Atlanta now. Right. In the height of the boom. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Back when it was Black Mecca. Yeah, yeah. And, if, you know, so happy over there doing my thing. Parents call up my mom. Now, you know mamas. When mama call, you got to go. Yeah, so she right. was like, you that's know, right. we need you to come home. And I'm like, you need to go pray because I am not going home. I'm not coming to Alabama. I don't like Alabama. You got five other children. How come you can't call them? <laughs> so um, I just decided to, you know, honor my, my mother and father. And I came home yep. and uh, started working with some young people here. And it just kind of evolved into where we are today. So Awesome. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So let's talk about More Than Tours, mm -hmm. um, which in itself speaks for itself. It's not just tours. I've been on it. I call it an experience. Would you agree with that statement? I would. Would okay. y'all agree? Y'all getting part of the background over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A holistic experience, right? So right. Uh, what, what got you into wanting to um, create and curate this experience in Montgomery? Well, first of all, A.G. Gaston says, mm. A.G. Gaston, which was a millionaire out of Birmingham, Alabama, who started you know, his own business, he said, if you see a need, fulfill it. Okay. Right? So there was a need here to do tours. There was m maybe a couple of people that were doing tours, mm -hmm. but really not on the magnitude in which we're doing it. So I said, okay, there's a need to do tours here. I tried to leave Montgomery and um, that didn't work out. So I just decided to stay and started, you know, doing more than tours, but really it was to fund our youth organization, right. which is called I Am More Than. I believe in, you know, social businesses. I believe that you should own your own. And so, um, so yeah, I started doing the tours as a way to help fund what we're doing with kids here. And just, it's been a blessing. Wonderful. It was at the right time, you yes. know? Yes. So, yeah. And so, in your, in your experience that you create and cultivate, mm -hmm. you really highlight some of the lesser known stories in our community. Right. Uh, so, where did you first learn about those stories and that history that we don't really teach in yeah. our public school system? Well, I'm a, I'm a lover of history. Mm -hmm. So when you love history and when you want more of it, so growing up in Verbena, Alabama, which is like 45 minutes from here, we didn't have the history, you know, they weren't teaching us black history or just history as it relates to um, African-Americans. So when I went to Atlanta, I started really seeking out 
you know, who am I, where, you know, our roots and everything. And from there, that's how it kind of started. But then when you read about Rosa Parks or when you hear about Rosa Parks, it's always, oh, she was this little middle-aged woman that is so tired from sitting on the bus. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, that's not the case. That's she right. was a Garveyite, you know, the mm -hmm. Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. She was, the woman was a bad chick. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so that's what I wanted to highlight. I wanted to highlight not just Martin Luther King Jr., but people like Vernon Johns, who was the pastor before right. Martin Luther that's King right. Jr. Much more uh, revolutionary Absolutely. If you, if you dig into it. Right. Absolutely. And so there's so many people here in mm -hmm. Montgomery that we don't talk about. The gentleman who started DuPont, who worked for, um, what is his name? Help me, help me, help me. There's a gentleman who was here from Alabama State University, mm -hmm. went on to be like this master chemist. Um, I see his face right now. I cannot I, call I, his name. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so it's just highlighting people that have made great contributions from Alabama that we don't talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. So, obviously, we, we're dealing with COVID-19. Yes. So how have you been navigating COVID-19? Uh, virtual tours. Mm. So what black people, what we're good at is taking what the master gives us. Okay. But, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, during slavery, when slaves didn't have enough to eat or the enslaved, they would take the scrapple from what yep. was left That's right. and make hog head cheese or pig feet or pig ear. So I just took what was left of COVID and turned it into a, a tour. You know, we, we give tours now all over the country. All you got to do is log on, hit that little button where right. you pay for it. And so it's been a blessing for me. What, what has the response been from that? Because, you know, we've, like you said, we've traditionally and historically have done more with less. Yes. Um, since we have been uh, in this country, what mm -hmm. has the reception been from our community uh, in response to that? Well, I'm a, can I be honest? Yeah. I gotta be honest. Absolutely. So like 95% of my tours are white folks right. okay. from around the country. Mm -hmm. So, but we also started a farm. Mm. And the farm has been more so for mental health for our community, for, you know, people that are suffering from COVID um, who just need to get out and stretch their legs or maybe right. they just need to um, just breathe without the mask. So we started a, a little horse farm and that has been a blessing, that you is. know. Yeah. So you can come out. Kalanji was riding and he looked kind of scared. Barely riding or? He was like this. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You know, you got to, you hey, got to, man. hey, <laughs> producer, Collide get on your game, man. Buffalo Soldier. I did my best. <laughs> you know, black Cowboy. Um, that's funny. That's yeah. funny. So talking about mental health, mm -hmm. um, obviously we have been dealing with COVID yeah. um, and also coupled in this time of COVID, mm -hmm. um, we've been seeing some some social unrest, mm -hmm. uh, some things we've been continuing to talk about. Uh, how mentally, how have you, how has that impacted you? Hmm, I was depressed. I'm, I'm like most folks. It was like you know because I stayed in Montgomery for my business, which was more than tours, and right. then to not do tours at all, it was like either I stay here and die or I sink into a, a real deep dark depression. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so, we're, again, we're just good at surviving. Right. You know, and so, but then the whole George Floyd thing happened, so you're stuck at home, you can't go out, so you have to look at this every day. Right. And it became bad for me. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So I just stopped, I shut down, I stopped talking, I didn't want to talk to nobody, I didn't want to discuss anything, and then a friend called. And she was like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing it. You know, I'm the black sheep of Montgomery. Nobody wants to, <laughs> you know, every time you say something, ah, oh, here she go again. So I just said, you know what? Y'all go ahead and do whatever. And then she said, we'll support it, whatever it is. So I'm like, black lives matter. So that gives us, that gives us a, a segue into, into what everybody really wants to talk about. Right. The mind behind right. the artwork at Court Square, yeah. uh, around the fountain. What was the... The thought process behind that? The thought process was why would you put Black Lives Matter in the street when we are here in the center, in the heart of the cradle of the Confederacy, in the heart of where uh, Al Montgomery, Alabama was at the top of you know, the slave, African enslavement in the Union. So why would you not put it around the fountain where they bought, sold, and traded in the heart of the city? 
And so, um, you know, again, I, I shopped it, yeah, I pitched it to a couple of people, Kalanji, 21 Dreams, Kevin King, and the King's Canvas. And they were like, we're on board, let's go. Yep. So the mayor, at the last minute, said okay. But he said okay. So here we are. So the design I had, to be honest with you, I've always wanted to do something kind of like hijack the square. Mm -hmm. uh, because we live in the South where you have Jefferson Davis and James Marion Sims, that's in everyone's picture. If you visit here and you take a picture of the Capitol, it's there. Mm -hmm. So why not have something and provoke more thought about um, Africans' roles uh, in terms sure. of building Montgomery, Alabama, right. than at the square. Yeah, awesome. So, mm -hmm. so what's what's next on your plate as far as projects in continuation Heminent with that uh, with, the artwork, with the artwork downtown? Okay, so now we believe in taking. Oh no, sweetheart, the, the t-shirt underneath the the see the t-shirt underneath. So had a meeting with our colleagues, right, our mm -hmm. friends. Uh, Kevin King, Kalanji, 21 Dreams, Milton Madison, and we was like, you know, why would we allow this great time in our city to go? Yeah, hold, hold, hold. Um, uh -oh. hold, hold, hold. Uh, so what we decided to do is we created a t-shirt. Mm. You see that right there? Mm. You see that? Yes. So had I not um, had enough money to fund the idea, if we had waited around, we would not have gotten support financially. So the idea now is to sell limited edition T-shirts, cups, mugs, whatever, and have a fund for black creatives and artists so that if 21 Dreams wants to put up a mural somewhere, we don't have to wait on somebody to give us a crumb. Right. We can fund our own projects. Awesome. awesome. So that's the next economics. Absolutely. What'd you say? I don't want to know about it. Okay. <laughs> say it again. Say it again. Cooperative economics. There it is. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the next thing. That's the next um, step. We're gonna we're gonna start funding our own ideas and helping other creative creatives get started. Right. And so that they can be self sufficient. And it's a it's a perfect place to do it. You know, it's I, I love it because we basically co opted what traditionally Black lives were a commodity. Mm -hmm. um, so they matter. They matter. Right. And mm -hmm. so now we're doing the same thing, doing more with less. That's right. And creating and stimulating our economy in times of COVID. Right. Because if you look at all the the activity that was surrounded by the artwork that our wonderful creators in the community did, mm -hmm. I mean, it was the most traffic that we've had um, since COVID yeah. started. So it was beautiful. Yeah. So in times of civil unrest and mm -hmm. where people are upset, mm -hmm. we've got people coming together, which I think is what we need to be doing to to, right. to continue the conversation. And the power of art, too. Absolutely. We came Absolutely. around through art and... Right. But we did something that black folks don't normally do. We came together. Sure, sure. And we got the job done. All right, so we're running low on time. Mm -hmm. I always like to ask people what their top three influences are. So this is going to be more spec uh, specified for Montgomery. Top three women influencers from Montgomery. Aurelia Browder. That's my family right there. Aurelia mm -hmm. Browder. Uh, top influencers would be um, the enslaved African women that built a lot of the buildings downtown, mm -hmm. made the bricks, and then I would think thirdly would be Coretta Scott King. Mm. She's often left out of the discussion, sure, uh, simply because her husband had a vision, but she was really the backbone of that family. Absolutely. So those would be my top. Three. Absolutely, wonderful. So. Uh, before we sign off, I want to make sure that uh, everybody donates to More Than Tours. Let's do that. Uh, Let's do so that. tell the audience how they, how they can support you. Well, right now it's just through the Cash App. Mm -hmm. But you can go online in the next day on Monday and go ahead and support all of the collective, the, the artists that were there um, by purchasing a t-shirt. So you can look that up, Cash App, Michelle Browder and or um, morethantours.com. Okay, do we, have some, do we have some questions from the audience out there in the interwebs? We had a question. Uh, the question was, what, was the, what is your influence uh, behind your art? Like, how did you get started with your art? Yeah, I don't wanna know that for real. Mm -hmm. I got kicked out of school for three days for fight when I was a kid. <laughs> Cause I didn't know what a nigga was. Can I say that on here? Well, you say it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. I'm just being honest. Right. I didn't know what a nigga was until I moved to Alabama. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand all of that. And so, you know, I was fighting for my name, my pride. And so my father came home one day, I never will forget. He gave me uh, 10 t-shirts and eight tubes of paint. And he said, you will not go to Tutwiler. I will not find you in Tutwiler. Mm -hmm. And from there, from that day to this one, I've always had my own business. 
And so one of my influencers is my father and sure. my mother because they kept me out of prison. See, I stand. Mm -hmm. Get that. That's what you got to do. So yeah, I'm just y'all ass, so I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> That's what it was. You got any more questions over there, brother? <laughs> Okay. We got we got a lot of support. We got uh, how many people we got logged in? We got sixteen shares. Only about twenty some people. What? Live, so you know, keep we building. We All building. Right. Third episode. Do you that. are you are the first one woman on our show. So we would not have how any other way. Right? How we do that? Right yeah. Now? There you go. So uh, we again happy to have you. Happy to uh, give you the platform to tell your story. Thank you. Um, so we can spread it out. Love to support you and continue to do what you have done. Thank, um, you. thank you again, Michelle Browder. Thank you that is going to be a wrap on our show. Thank y'all for watching Under the Influence. Copper shirt starting tomorrow, correct? Tomorrow, Monday, yes. Yes. next week. Get your shirt, special Absolutely. edition. To support our creatives here locally. We love you. That's a wrap. Under the Influence Live. Appreciate y'all. Claps. So, uh, I was, I was, I was, I was expecting you. I was, I was expecting you to say George Gilmore. So I was surprised that you didn't. But yeah, um, I mean, we, uh, obviously, I know how much you love and respect George Gilmore. Yes, as I, well. do. I do. So. Um,